I'm uh, I've been stepping up pretty consistently as the point person, but there's no need for that. Um, so if either any of you guys uh, feel I'm dominating too much, it won't hurt my feelings for you to let me know that. And if anybody wants to run this meeting besides me, you know, that's fine. I just had something to add there. Sure. This morning, someone asked me. Even though we had, we had agreed that this morning or this afternoon at 12 it would be a general assembly, they wanted to actually put out the word of, hey, even though it's before 12, still show up because it's still an occupation. Yeah. I didn't know I didn't know the specific routes to do that. That's when I came to you and asked about the Facebook privileges. Yeah. And whether is that something we can go and make that outreach statement to people, or is that something? Yeah, that don't have that privilege. You definitely can tell people informational points at will. <clears throat> I would not hesitate at all. And I can give you Facebook credentials. Okay. Log in as Occupy. Should we do that as individuals on Facebook or as Occupy? What? Because we're media, I don't think it's out of line for us to post from the Occupy Richmond yeah. account. Okay. Josh gave me the credentials. And the only thing is, is that um, I want to keep a tight rein on those credentials because obviously anybody who got them could F with us. Yeah. Um, but certainly, if you want them, you're welcome to them. Um, I'm not sure that media has advertised an external assembly. There yeah. is a there is a note There's a on post Facebook, on there. Yeah. Okay. It was uh, it was put up at quarter to seven last night. Okay. So. Good. Good. All right. Okay. So I had a few points that I wanted to go over. Did you want to talk about the list of donations? Um. Is that something you want to bring we up? We can. I mean, and that still might be like a big group consensus with everyone because I don't know if it's like, does it seem better as us as we're like keeping a list of contributed items that people have given to us? And so then that can influence other people to want to give as well or not. So. It seems like uh, auxiliary is handling accepting donations. Am I mistaken about that? Yeah, that sounds right. Well, it's Probably. because we're not, you know, with their auxiliary, yeah, when everyone, someone's not here from a certain group to take it, they're always the ones taking it. Okay. Well, if somebody wants to take point on note, noting donations, we can certainly bubble that information up to the. Okay. I mean, if, that, even if that, it's the, is that information get plugged in somewhere on the website? That was it my can. concern this morning. Yeah, I was like, we can create a page for it. Whether we make the list and the page, yeah, or whether someone else does. Like we offer to give us a gift card or go out and buy a gift card for the like burger, um, and I think it's really important we. Stuff like that, and the website would probably be the best way to do that, so it can get out to it, not just people here, but people. Well, it, it could also turn into another work group itself as bookkeeping or whatever, you know. And that's the, that's one that I wanted to introduce at General Assembly. Just throw ideas out there to see how we can get around, get fundraising going, because it's ugly, but it's completely necessary. To be honest, this, this is going to cost money to keep going. Okay, as far as financials go, there is a temporary financial working group that is trying to get together how to accept those donations. The problem yeah. is that we're an informal group in the eyes of any financial institution, True. so we can't take any money. We're not constituted in any way that can take money, yeah, we're not, we're not, but, but we're working on it. We can receive donations right. and cards, right? Right, absolutely. And we should, um, if the, the only issue I have is like, somebody needs to be in charge of noting each of those donations, I mean, and is that really, me media can record it, maybe yeah, media shouldn't be the people in charge, <laughs> but yeah. they can be the people who accept the list as it, it grows. Yeah. yeah, should put the list up, we should be the ones getting the list and putting them up. Yeah, okay. I agree. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah. so I think we can, I, we can oppose, that, uh, propose that to the auxiliary team and see what happens. Yeah, I think maybe bringing up the GA might be the right move, and then everybody will know about it and someone can step forward. Someone's going to have to be point on it. Just the general inventory consent. Yeah. Okay, so we'll bring that that up at the GA. Um, another thing I wanted to go over is uh, Josh brought up Dig and Reddit, like some deep social network stuff that we could be doing. Uh, this gentleman, or were you volunteering to do stuff on Reddit? Um, yes, uh, I, I'm on Reddit quite a bit. So. Okay. I already posted something last night and on uh, two subreddits um, that has received some response, but um, I would like to get a, sub, uh, in, a subreddit of our own for Occupy Richmond uh, set up so that any um, YouTube videos that we have, um, any 
blog postings. You can post that on Reddit. That way it's all one central place. Um, and people can upvote it and comment on it. And we can, we can respond through that subreddit. Um, but if you're unfamiliar with Reddit, I will gladly show you how to submit things to, the, uh, to it, how to comment, how to do all that. Super simple. Um, I just need a computer with internet capabilities. But uh, besides that, Okay. So what I would say is uh, if you could keep an eye on the blog and Twitter and just look for things that would be appropriate, then that would be great. Yeah, I mean, I'll do my part, but as y'all post things on YouTube, also, you know, if I'm not there, post it on uh, Reddit as well, just to get some views going, you know, directed towards those. Uh, sure. Videos. And everything that we're posting to social media sites, we are tagging with Occupy Richmond. So you can go on YouTube and do a search for that tag, and you should be able to find and Flickr and all that. And that's one word, right? <laughs> Occupy Richard, one word. Occupy Stay. Richard, one word. Okay. Um, oh, did you want to introduce yourself since this is oh, your first meeting? Um, I'm Ira. I'm a graphic design student. I do photography, so I'm doing pictures. I've been doing a little. Uh, Welcome. Thanks. Okay. Um, you actually, that was a great point to segue into, I think, one of the most pressing issues that we're facing right now. Everybody's looking to us to establish internet connectivity. Yes. Where are we at with that? Does anybody know? Okay, I don't think, I don't think anybody's moving forward. Um, what I've heard is that Alex has a clear wire modem. Everybody else heard that too, right? Yes. But he's not going to be here again until Monday. So, I have where in the, posted. Where in the city has free Wi Fi. What's that? Where in the city can you pick up on free Wi Fi? Bus station, stuff like that. This area would be troublesome. I know, These are all I know closed corporate 4 networks. The nearest one's uh, probably Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? They do have two blocks. Uh, rush hour lunch. There's a uh, Capital Ale House, too, uh, that has a oh, yeah. Wi Fi. Um, Okay, so does anybody have any ideas on how we can deal with this? I mean, get a clear wire account. Get yeah, I mean, we could just. Okay, so so one thing I've done is there's a list of needs that uh, that auxiliary has collected and given me and has been updating. We have that on the blog, and that's good. Um, I added uh, 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 wireless modem internet connectivity device of some sort on that list. Maybe somebody will donate something. Um, in the meantime, maybe we should try and get an account with Clearwire or go pick up a cellular modem at, at Sprint. I know Sprint has this like MiFi thing. It's like you pay, you know what I'm talking about? I've seen it, but I've heard bad reviews of it. Okay. So I don't know if it's. I mean, if it works in this general area, it's all we really need. Yeah. Well, <laughs> for now, but we're going to be moving that way. Well, yeah, but I mean, it, as long as it works in, in one spot here, yeah, it, I mean, we can go to that spot as long as it's here. I mean, it could be this bit wide as long as we have it available. Um, so it doesn't have to be you know, stellar you know, software or hardware. Is just that just what speed. that would lead into then fundraising for monthly subscription rates right. because of the data transfer? There's another thing we can do. I know that AT&T allows me to pay an extra 40 bucks a month, and I can turn this into a router. Unlimited though? Um, what will happen is right now I have an unlimited plan for data and I'm grandfathered in, uh, but if I change to, it's going to give me four gigabytes a month. And then I pay $10 a gigabyte all over that, which isn't that bad, but it does make me put a premium on usage because it's my pocketbook. Yes. So this brings us to another issue, which is how open do we want to make this internet? Because it seems to me like the priority is getting the media message out. But other people may not agree. They may want to post well, their own shit. Considering that a lot of people are all part of assisting and getting that information up, meaning their videos, their, them sending things to YouTube and whatnot, they may also want to. You know what I mean? Everyone will need internet. I also think like if we have internet, <coughs> <laughs> they could bring their laptop yeah. here. Yeah. It might it might work to like have something for us at first, and maybe we could figure out something for everybody. Well, 
I think once we can like set up that canopies and tents like that, they're doing it in New York, I hear, where it's an internet cafe where it's they have stations that are stationary. You want to check the email, you use our equipment to do that, not using your laptop to Wi Fi in. And then you're put on the list. Okay, well, you're fifth on the list. Come back when it's your time. Yeah. I don't know if we want to establish something like that down the road, but just in the short down term. Down the road, maybe. Yeah. We, need to, we need to work on getting the internet for ourselves first, and so we can do what we need to do. It's not, it's not necessary. We're going to have to accommodate everyone eventually, but priority is getting us uh, some, you know, just a few of us and the internet connection. My other concern would be the transfer rate, four gigs a month or whatever. What are what are our limitations? Obviously, we can't upload video because then that's hosed all of your bandwidth for the month. I'm already uploading video for my 3G. I'm just not using the tether for it. The quick video that I took of the skits. Okay, so you're using your unlimited plan, right? Yeah. So if someone had a camera video that they just want to say, this was a five minute outbreak that happened in the middle of the night and we just want to get it out there real quick, how could someone do that through your, your avenue? Or they, how they could we could provide? What would happen is, um, all right, here's the thing. Like, I, my office mate, uses the 4 gigabyte plan and he tethers like probably a week out of every month and from what he's seen he's never like if he had done it the whole month and used the internet just regularly which he used it extensively for video and all that stuff he would never have gone over that 4 gigabyte limit but that's just one person now the other thing is that I just pay for extra now 10 bucks a gigabyte ain't that bad um so I don't know, like maybe I maybe I could get compensated once we get donations working. I don't know, the important thing right now is to get up and running. And I think at one, while we're still figuring out what the bandwidth limitations are, because I really don't know, like empirically, I'm just telling you secondhand, um, we should probably keep it to media. I feel bad saying that, but... You know, and maybe, and maybe when we don't have a lot of usage, we can open it up. But I don't know. Once it's out there, it's out there. The other thought is, right now, we're uploading to YouTube. If we do get this set up, what if we just have a main server box that's running with the videos on it? So then we're not actually trying to push out. We're just allowing people to come in. So not uploading to YouTube for eventually video. we would, but we would do it off site. But the video would still be available because it's on our own private on server, in a sense, running in the park. I feel you. Um, if you want to, if you want to bottom line that, I'm all about it. But we're talking about setting up an yeah. upload system. Yeah, just a thought. Yeah, no, I, I feel you. I, I, I understand, and I appreciate the attempt to limit our bandwidth. And uh, when we even have a laptop, maybe we, maybe we can tackle that. I think, think it will be. Good ideas for at least a couple times a day for us to get together, take a trip to the nearest Starbucks or um, other you know, kind of computer friendly spot, upload everything at one time that's you know, not you know, time you know, sensitive. Yeah. yeah, time sensitive. Upload a whole bunch of stuff at one time. That way we can use their internet and if we, it's a surefire thing. Um, and I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to do to go across the street to do these yeah. things a couple times a day. And we sure play plenty of time, so... Um. Yeah, the other option, I think, um, Jeremy said he had a 4 terabyte hard drive. You can always dump that off if someone actually goes to their house or something. 4 terabyte? 4 terabyte. Jesus. Hey, come I have here. a Drobo <laughs> and I need to back up the Drobo. <laughs> You need back to the Library of Congress while you're at it. <laughs> I have a lot of data that I've downloaded, and that's all I will say about it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so here's here's what I see the action items being. Uh, I'm going to look into getting an iPhone tether so that I can run this as a, as a router that okay. people can access. And we're going to keep it internal to media at first so we realize how much we need. Um, and I'm going to contact Alex, or somebody else can contact Alex, and just see what the deal is, like when he can get us that modem. That would be really helpful, because that's going to be better. 
This probably doesn't have a lot of like Wi-Fi range because it's a freaking yeah. phone. Yeah. Um, does anybody else have anything to say to that? Uh, I think there's a uh, Wi-Fi at the Capitol Square. That's that's open network, and that's like two or three blocks away. Let me see if I can see it. I think it's got the word cap in it, maybe. There are plenty of restaurants down in that area that are the only the only um sorry about that the only uh, network I'm picking up is CB Guest. So I would love to be able to like mooch off with one of these yeah guys who mooch off of us, but uh, yeah, <laughs> so far no good. Anyway, all right, let's move on. So there's another thing that I wanted to bring up, which is what's our schedule over the next week. Who's going to be here when? Yeah, we need to do that. Yeah. I'm definitely working Monday through Friday, but I can come basically after work since it's on my route back to work. I walk or bike home. I work just a few blocks away from here. So I'll be coming by in the evenings. Third Mondays, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I work in Shaka Bottom, so I'll be here at, uh, after 5, um, maybe before 11, if I get up my ass up out of bed. Um, after um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I can be here during the day, but I do have a night class. So, um, so I, mean, I will try to make a presence here every day as much as possible. Here. Um, but my for the weekends, so, here. I guess the question is, is there anybody here that, you know, yeah, can be here during the day? I can be here during the day. Yes. Especially if I have internet connectivity, I can work here. Right. <laughs> I, I work during the week, uh, 9 to 5, and uh, this coming week I have a lot of city council meetings in the, in the evening that I'm going to be attending. Okay. So. Kind of busy this week. <laughs> All right. Well, um, what about you? Uh, 8.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. Okay. So evening to Are you weekends. planning on being here in the evening? Yes. Okay. Every, every evening. For the most part, yeah. Yeah, Mondays, Mon I work Monday through Friday. I'm pretty much like Layla. I, I work right downtown, um, like in Tobacco Row. Mm -hmm. So I come back and forth through here, and I can be here, um, you know, directly after work to, like, Help out, whatever. Um, or if there's batteries that need to be charged, I can take it home. Yeah. Um, yeah. Loading, take take footage home to load if it's like SD cards or um, if it's tape. Uh, and some people have have you know like DV tape media. Um, I would have to have the camera. Actually, I have my camera, but I was going to give it out to someone else. But you know, if if it's like SD cards or something like that, I can I can take that home to load footage. Okay. Now, who's planning on sleeping here? I am. Okay. Uh, I will try as much as I can. Yeah, weekends, yeah. Because weekends, yeah. those, those are the two times that weekday, the middle of the night, right? Yeah. When everybody's sleeping, and weekday during the day. <coughs> those are our two gaps, it sounds like. Yeah. Well, I have a suggestion on that. Maybe we can put a shout out for other people interested in the media who are going to be here during the day to be there for us. Obviously, I'm right. Okay. So, do you have a camera? Okay. Well, I have one, and I can move that out. Okay. It's mini DV, so it's not, um, you know, but it's still a camera. Okay. So. Um, and also remember, all the media. I don't think even half the media is here right now. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to SMS. Yeah, maybe uh, SMS, and then what we need to do is start a forum thread, and get everybody's schedule and I'll try to compile a schedule so that we can see where our gaps are. Because okay. somebody from media needs to be here. Yes. Um, I hope legal is doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to uh, bring up one thing. Um, I think it should be kind of the job of media to also um, to address the media, the big media as well. Um, and by doing that is by me doing media training seminars. Sorry, I have one volume. I want to try to do media training seminars with the yeah. general folks. 
teach them how to speak to the media, what to say to the media, what not to say to the media, um, uh, how to prepare them for, because today we had a gentleman from the Richmond Times Dispatch show up. Um, before that we had a, a blogger from the Democratic Party come in. Um, and then we had Channel 6 last night. Um, we need to make sure that you know, we're getting the proper message out. Um, not saying that we're speaking for the movement, but that we can at least get a, a coherent message out. Um, a lot of these guys, I, I think, will try to throw out a lot of big words and isms you know, on everything. And that's not helpful when you're speaking to the media. Um, yeah, that's, so I want to try to communicate that. And um, I have experience in um, doing media things, so I'll be more willing to, you know, to facilitate that. Um, but we can try to just spread the word out, you know, try to organize the time that we can get everybody to gather around so tell them how to address the media and what, you know, that's what I said before. Um, has anybody else spoken to the media before? Alright, it's really easy to be misquoted. Um, uh, something I will tell the group as a whole. Uh, I, I do a lot with higher education reform. Um, and just this past, last semester, the governor's public going has a really big education, higher education reform. And I was all for it. Well, I was attending a speech of his, and the rich, lady from the Richard Times Dispatch came up and asked me, um, what are your concerns with Governor um, O'Donnell's, uh, O'Donnell's uh, uh, bill, uh, plan? And again, I'm for the bill. I wanted it to pass. I wanted it to happen. Well, that she asked what my concerns are. Well, I said, I, um, I, well, I'm really, I'm for the bill. I, I'm really happy with it. Um, I just want to make sure, but I, I mean, I just want to make sure that the quality of education doesn't go down. Perfectly innocent statement, but guess what got quoted? I'm concerned that the quality of education is going to go down and put my name right next to it. Um, so it's important to be aware of that before you be prepared to say you know, what you're going to say before you say it. Um, and by doing that, say it positive with everything you say. Um, like, for instance, when the Richard Times Dispatch guy came up to me today, he said, uh, you know, he asked me a question, I was just like, and I kind of, he asked me you know, what we did last night, and I was just like, it was a great, um, it was a big success last night. Everybody, everything went smoothly. Uh, we welcome any more people to join us today, and um, we welcome the media to attend our groups. I didn't exactly answer his question, but I gave a positive answer that he wrote down, and I'm positive that tomorrow morning in your surprise badge, I will be quoted with a positive message for our movement. Because I, and, but the first time you say anything negative, like um, you know, we had a little bit of a scuffle last night. Latches on to it. That's going to be the that's going to be the headline. Okay, so you got to be super careful to, to do that. Um, so the reason why I'm telling you guys is just because I want you know if you do see a media person around, somebody right now, walk up to them, say how you doing, you know, just but be prepared with a statement. Keep it short, uh, less uh, three uh, three or less sentences. Um, use small words, but keep it positive. Um, they're looking for controversy. That's not giving them in. Can I add something? Um, I think, first of all, um, we should work on a curriculum. The media group should work on putting together a handout that we can give out yeah. that has these rules because not everybody oh, will be able to make these videos, seminars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, how you doing? And these aren't difficult things to keep in mind. Uh, one other thing, we need okay. to make sure that when people talk, that they stress to the media that they are talking in their individual capacity, and that they do not represent the group. I had to stress this to the Times Dispatch reporter. Like, I said it like five times to her. No, I don't speak for the group. Slow down. Like, this is just me. You have to talk to everybody here if you want to get this into the whole group. Um, that said, you try to convey to them, like, what everybody's thinking. Um, but make sure that you don't speak right, for the you. group because then they're going to take that as the official word and, you know, you're here for your own reasons as well as to be part of the group. Yeah. And it's important to make that clear distinction for people who want to put everything in the sound bites, right? Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. Right, right. Speak in your own personal capacity. You don't speak for the group. Yeah. If you don't speak for the group, 
how do you speak as individuals? How can you grow the movement? Very carefully. <laughs> the, move, the movement, I'm reflecting on how we stopped the Vietnam War, and that was, was <laughs> college kids educated construction workers on the truth. We all know what the truth is. The truth is the rich control our country. Doesn't that message have to start spilling out? Forty percent of the wealth is controlled by one percent. You, I mean, that seems to me. But that, see, those are those are those are what, what um, the media uh, refers lovingly as sound bites. You give it. You give a, um, a good, concise statement, one or two sentences, and that's easy to remember, easy to say. And easy for them to take home with. It's, it's a quick little sound bite. Um, those those are extremely valuable for movements such as this. Um, now, as far as capturing the we versus the me, um, you can say we as in you know, it's, we're, we're having a great time. We're you know, we're very excited. Um, you know, talking about. But once you talk, say what we're standing for, what what we're here for, he might not be here for the same reason I'm here. So as far as issues, keep those personal. But as far as a general consist, a general um, atmosphere um, speaking, you can you can incorporate the we aspect. There, I I feel like there is a large consensus in the movement globally about what we're against. <laughs> I'm sorry, locally or globally? Globally, about what we're against. It's a pretty good idea of what we're against, and it doesn't need to be elaborated on much, because everybody knows. Everybody knows what the problem is at, a, at, a, at the 30,000 foot level. Um, when we get into specifics, we don't want to say anything and represent the GA when they haven't said what the will of the GA is. So, I think that gives people a lot of latitude. You can say that we all are against, you know, the financial corruption, and I believe, da 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 da, da. Um, that makes the media have to do their job of actually reporting, of actually getting a variety of viewpoints where they can see what's in common and what's different. That's their job to do that. It's not our job to put all of it together. I mean, we're doing that to the extent but they have to do their job too. Unfortunately, it looks to me like what the, what the media right is now. doing is trying yes. to splinter and say, yeah. Uh, Nobody really knows what they here, want. If, um, Everybody's on a different page. Anything. They're not organized. They're right. Not this. And, can, and in I this state, the media, it's against you in the first place. But, but I would not expect a movement that is this extraordinary and transcending the problems that the media usually just sort of like puts into their dichotomy and just plays off against each other. He's like, you know liberal, conservative, left, right, you know, and, you know, they just always tell the story from two sides, right? They're not going to understand what we're doing. They're, they, the system can't integrate this. This doesn't work according to the way the system works. The system wants something that can fit into it, and it's, it's, it's a losing battle to try to get them to understand it. The best we can do is try to show them how personal this is, that these are human beings, that even if they don't understand it, this matters, right? That's the best we can do. I don't expect any reporter to understand. But well, they can understand the human story, at least. What about... That's just my opinion. There's, there's millions of Americans like me who are sitting in front of their two going, well, does this really matter? In their heart, they know it matters. Well, they're wondering they're, if this is the thing that matters. Pardon? They're wondering if this is the thing that's going to change them. They're, yeah, will this work? But what I'm saying is, how do you how do you pull this guy out from the front of his television and say, stand up and be counted as one? I think the first step is to, for God's sake, don't count on things through media to do that job for you. So we have our own outlets that we are putting information out for. So, for example, on our blog, we have a page where we are collecting people's statements about why they're in this movement, okay? We can't make a statement for why everybody's in this movement, but we can share with other people, okay, here's somebody who's just like you. Here's what his statement is. Here's some, another person just like you. Here's what their statement is. Um, and we can give them information about the things that we're talking about. 
because it's not just changing the world and changing the political and financial and economic system that is important here, at least not to me. It's also the way we make decisions and the character of our group. Um, a consensus-based model. That's also just as important as taking down these guys, in my view. And I think a lot of other people probably feel the same way. Um, so if we let the media characterize all of this, they're going to focus on the political, the, the flashy stuff. And it may it may get more attention, but will it be the right attention? And I understand it's frustrating. We have said over and over that this is moving so slow, and it's hard to, to, to keep up with it. You know, what's, what scares me is I'm behind your movement a thousand percent. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm not computer savvy. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I gotta go to the TV. I gotta go to the stupid newspaper. And I gotta read the crap. Yes. I, I, in the words of Keith Hogan, this, this may be the last chance to make America right. If this movement failed, and it's got a good nationwide sound, it could go either way. It could go either way. If it goes the wrong way, we're finished. We're finished. The rich will control everything. They control almost everything now. The reason we're in this mess is because they snuck things in here, and they snuck things in there, and they snuck things in over there. Now they're trying to suppress the vote. They're trying everything they can to make us. Minimal, minimal importance. If they do away with the middle class, they'll bring in South American people to do minimum, all the work, all the work for minimum wage. They don't care. They don't care if I starve or you starve. All they care about is if that corporate jet's warm enough to take it down to the Bahamas. The issue is how do we make, how do we reach people? And maybe you have some good ideas about this without speaking, taking people's voices and representing them without their will. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to speak for all these people here because I don't know them. I don't know what they care about. I understand that, and, and I, I understand the, the need for individual people to express themselves. And I, I, I agree with that consensus. I, I guess my concern is that the older people like myself are not computer savvy enough, you know, my cell phone don't even have a camera, you know, I, we, we, we are missing your message because the media is not giving it the attention it deserves, right. here in New York it is. And, and we're at their mercy to a certain extent. If you have we ideas, but if you have ideas on how we can play them better, you can go down there and talk to the news reporter and uh, speak as an individual. And Absolutely. Yeah, you can go over there and talk. I think it's channel 12. Personally, I, <laughs> I, I should have taken the time this morning, and, and I didn't, to say, Mr. Cantor, I am not a mobster. That's my first thought. You know, this is what your local politicians are trying to do. You're a mobster. Yeah. I thought it was my First Amendment right to come to this park and speak my piece. Obviously, my politicians don't agree with me. And that's the kind of thing that gets the attention of the audience. You're taking away my right to speak. Yeah. You're taking away my right to assembly. That's what older people would respond to more than individual issues. Your, I, right, your right to assemble has to be protected somehow. They've already, I'm assuming, I'm only getting into this in the last few days. They moved you from one park to this park. Was that because you had to move? No, that, that was, was a choice. That was, it was a choice. That was the majority rule decision. It was between here and Monument Avenue. My my opinion on that is you, you got yourself a, a long ways from college. You lost a lot of easy kids. There were pros and cons to all the choices. I'm headed. sure there was. Yeah. Uh, I would be very interested in any ideas you have about how we can reach the old population. One of the things that we talked about doing is. We cannot, it is very difficult for us in a legitimate way to speak for the group. However, what we can do is coordinate op-eds to the Richmond Times Dispatch. So yeah, we're not speaking for the group, but we're making sure that what gets submitted represents, a, it's a representative swath of, of viewpoints and concerns. And that's one of the things that we're going to start doing. And you know, it's up to the Times Dispatch if they want to publish it or not. But at least we're getting it out there. You know?
And maybe, maybe um, I would be interested in any other idea because I agree. That's a population that's particularly dependent on pork and meat. And we need to break through to that. Well, the offense, I, 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 keeping the foundation of the movement to, to be an, of an individual opinion is, is good. But it's, it's my opinion, if you don't go start going after some of the politicians directly, it's just going to keep them. You're not bothering them, they're not going to bother you. If you start bothering them, all of a sudden they're going to come out of the woodwork and Cantor's going to start saying things that's either going to irritate people or make them happy. Yeah. Right now, most of the time, he's irritating people. Oh yeah. You know, oh, yeah. and this, this is what's got to happen. We've got to irritate them to the point where he's handcuffed. Am I for the people or am I for the rich? Yeah. Uh, there, there's one other thing I wanted to say, which is um, the reason that we can't make more overt statements as a group is because the GA hasn't authorized that. There's nothing stopping the GA from authorizing that, from taking a 90% consensus view on a statement that we can issue as something from the General Assembly. And um, it's up to people to propose that and to work on that. It's going to be a slow process, but I'm sure that we could come up with something. This is a GA of this group. The General Assembly, oh, yeah. Um, the problem is, is that up till now, we've just been trying to get organized to get to the party. I think last night uh, there was a declaration committee formed, right? <laughs> or uh, proposed? I wasn't aware of that. Okay. I think it was That's proposed. I don't know the thing Okay. So... See, we've got, with other things that are going on in the country right now, Cantor's up to here with his failure to do anything. Oh, yeah. And He's got the tea party down there, it too. Wouldn't, it wouldn't be hard right now to push him. You know, you see a guy going down here, you give him a little push. And he's been a, he's, he's been a, and right my opinion, solid for him, he's a wise guy leader. Oh, yeah. He has, I've seen he it. has the Goochman millionaire horse farmers back in his every word that comes out of his mouth. Un unfortunately, Gushu County is, which is where I'm from, a very wealthy county. But we are <laughs> we are giving him static. I, I uh, email him, my wife emails him via my statements every day. Last one being, you're taking my, my First Amendment right to speak and calling me a mobster. Yeah. And he, and he right? backed off of that a little bit. Yeah, I think a so. little bit. Right. Not much. I know a lot of people thought it was um, okay. unorganized, so I made a big deal about that. Yeah, that was really yeah. organized. I don't have an answer, yeah. unfortunately. We're going to continue to work on that. We, we've heard the concern, and we're we're not going to ignore it. I, I can I guarantee guess, you that. We're going to think of something. I think we're going to We're in a meeting right now. Sorry. But uh, is there any other concerns that need to be brought up? Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is send out an SMS to the whole group. If you're not on my SMS list, let me know. And uh, I will send a link to the forum thread where we're going to list our when we can be here. And then I will post a schedule for that. I, I, that's what I was going to do. I was going to put a Google calendar together. All right? Okay.